Daniel, what's up, man? Workout Wednesday. That's man. right. Happy workout. Hey, that's right. Happy New Year and happy workout Wednesday. What's up? Uh, with you? It's a late night. Just come back to the office because this is such an exciting way to spend a Wednesday with my new best friend. I know. And to chat all things nutrition, diet, fitness. And obviously on the back of you getting an award at the Astros. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much, brother. What time is it in the UK right now? So it's just gone eight o'clock in the evening. Ah, okay. So not too bad. I don't not feel so bad. bad. I can still get my uh, an early night and get my muscle recovery. There you go. The Did you thing. work out today? Of course. It's workout Wednesday. Right, always. You're right. I haven't worked out yet, but I will after this call. Still this call fine. was more important. <laughs> <laughs> What's the plan for work this, this Wednesday's workout? Do you have a split that you do? Yes. Or? I try to do half the week upper body, half the week lower body, two and two. I do yeah. about four days a week. I added an extra day of legs because I feel like I dedicate so much time, the camera muscle, <laughs> to upper body that I don't give enough attention to my lower body and how much muscle mass there is below the yeah. waist. All you people that have, have a sick frame of mind, I already know where y'all are going with this. But it truly is, our, our lower body has a lot of mass and, and I wanna pay more attention to that. I haven't been. This year I changed up my splits and I'm doing a heavy leg day and I'm doing a more higher rep leg day. Okay. And then the other two days of my body, of my upper body, I'm not focusing as much time as I uh, used to on arms. Yeah. I'm just supersetting my arms so that I can exhaust them as I work the bigger muscles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That they're synergistically working. Tonight I did chest and biceps because okay. it worked out. If I was doing back and biceps, that basically I was hitting the same muscle twice. So by splitting it out, right. I was able to get triceps in on a bicep workout day as well. So ah, anyway. and by, and then vice yeah. versa when you do back and try I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna try that today. And then I do a four, four day split and then repeat it so every month I do the same thing twice in the same week. But anyway, I could go on and on you, for hours. <laughs> do legs twice a week on your four day split? Yeah. Ah, yeah. Yeah, got, yeah that's the ticket, man. You gotta hit them more than once. <laughs> I've got very small legs, so I have to work them hard. Same here, same here. I I'm it's not like my exciting day to work <laughs> out, but I know it's necessary. So I'm gonna try it out, see how, how that's it works. it. I'll tell you one thing. If my legs grow next season on the board. Boys, I'm gonna be in shorts all season. Speedos. I'm letting, exactly. I'm letting you guys know. Speedos but, all uh, season. Man, thanks for joining me today, bro. I, I really wanted to talk to you and share my excitement over the biosynergy DNA test. Yeah. More than anything, because as I mentioned in the video that I already made, mm. up until now, like my pantry has looked like a nutrition store it looks like the nutrition aisle when you go down the grocery store and it's because i really have always felt like i'm shooting in the dark every week every month there's a new fitness guru saying what you need to take what you absolutely need to take men over 40 should be taking this women should be taking this supplement and if you're not getting this in your diet then you're really doing it. and it just becomes overwhelming and next thing you know i have 50 bottles of pills I'm taking all this stuff and I really don't know what's working, what isn't, what my body really truly needs and what I might just be taking and just flushing right out of my system because my body is doing fine. Yeah. Me. So what the DNA test did for me personally was I felt more informed about what's going on a cellular level yeah. inside of my body. I felt like I finally had an owner's manual to my health health Absolutely. and it allowed me yeah it allowed me to say okay you know what i don't need to get all these vitamins or all these minerals i need x y and z um so tell me a little bit about like how yeah, this I mean, product gonna, came about i was gonna ask a little bit more about you before i get into the product side sure go ahead go ahead what i loved about you when we first spoke was your authenticity and i've obviously watched you from afar on my screen for many years and in many different roles and you're always active and you're always giving 110 percent and i just love that about you and i was very excited when our first call how authentic you were so what would be good for me to understand obviously you've got a very active job you've got i guess there's a lot of pressure 
doing what you do to look a certain way and so on and so forth. So what got you into fitness in the first place? Was it, have you always been into it or were you like me? Were you the fat kid at school that kind of hid and then got into it at a later point in life? Or is it something that you've carried through your whole lifestyle? Nah, man, I was always the skinny kid. Oh, school. really? Yeah, yeah man. Okay. I, I was 155 pounds as long as I could remember. It took me, like my goal weight was always 180. If I could just yeah. hit 180, I finally arrived to the pinnacle. And then once you hit 180, then your goal weight becomes 200. And then 210, 210, yeah. that's enough. I was always the very, very thin, frail kid that wanted to gain weight. I was very fast and very athletic, but I couldn't put on a pound to save my life. Yeah. And, and finally, when I discovered the gym, that's when I realized how I could add on weight yeah. was through, through resistance training. So I became enamored and in love with the gym. And who knew that it would not only give me the more weight and size that I felt a little more secure in, in my, who I was and, and as a young man, but also it was a form of therapy, which I didn't realize it was going to do for me. The gym really is my therapy. I go in there, no matter what problems I have going on in my life, I just release it when I'm in there and it gives me an outlet, a physical outlet yeah. to just get rid of stress. And then also in the roles that I tend to play, they tend to be very physical roles. Yeah. From the very beginning of my career, when I played a lot of bad guys and Marine Corps and cops and all these roles that require physicality, the gym was always there. And when I say gym, I don't only mean weights. I've studied martial arts. I've practiced martial arts my whole life. Now. I'm into like a little more Tai Chi and softer style. I've been doing Tai Chi for over 20 That's years. Amazing. Every night. Amazing. I love it. I think it's the most underrated martial art. My sensei, or Sifu, is he looks like an old tortoise with <laughs> thick glasses. But my God, this guy is so strong. It's like he's made right. of steel. It's, it's right. crazy. And I find that with the the resistance training obviously is so important for our health and well-being. In fact, there's a lot more studies that are coming out now about when you hit 50, you've got to actually increase that, particularly if you're a woman, because you're a higher risk of osteoporosis and losing bone density. And there's, a, there's also a lot of stuff now about longevity and helping with that as well. And blood flow. Yeah. You know, I think that's something that's so underrated and it's never really talked about is how important us intentionally moving blood throughout our body yeah. forcing body into the feet and back up to the heart and 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 being active enough so that bloody that, that our blood continues to flow blood is what carries the nutrients to all of our our different parts yeah. of our body so yeah. the more we can actively and intentionally move it there the healthier those states those body parts can remain Hundred what my seafood is saying is stand still get fit so he makes us in that posture and he does it with kettlebells 10 wow. kilos the guy is like a, a, a brick that, but that, that always like meaning these older seafoods and martial arts masters keeps me humble man because it's yeah, a, those are the guys that like the grocery store and you don't even realize no, that's the last guy you want to mess with <laughs> you know what i mean like the younger guys that are walking around in tank tops those are pushovers yeah. it's the little old man pushing the cart with the flowers don't yeah. mess with him. Don't mess with him. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So, so yeah, so man. Got a couple of and so just to, to answer your question and, and, and not go too far off. Yeah. So what got me and what kept me into the gym was the fact that I, my job requires me to look a certain way, to mm. feel a certain way, to be able to perform a certain way and to be able to do it for long hours because our average yeah. day is 12 to 15 hours without getting hurt. That could be usually it's exteriors and the boys, we shoot a lot of exteriors and in Toronto, the weather is, it's, it, you never know what you're going to get. You could get a sunny day and it's warm, or it could be a cold day and snow. That's what I find the gym to be the most helpful in is keeping me healthy. Very much uh, an athlete would, but it's not just about how you perform during the game, but it's being able to last the entire season yeah, without injuries. Yep. Definitely. I've got a couple of fun questions for you. Um, mm. Maybe it's not the right question considering you're in the boys. If you could have any 
superpower and obviously your character wouldn't want any but let's talk about you what would it be if i could have a superpower that i could apply in real life here it yeah. would be mind reading cool. can you imagine how much you can accomplish if you could just read people's <laughs> minds i think it'd be scary actually i don't think i want to know what's going on in a lot of people's minds I, definitely some people you don't want to know what's going on in their minds Anthony Starr, who plays Homeland on our show, he was just on the chat. I don't know if he's still on. I don't want to know what's going on in his mind. That's the last place I want to be is in, in Tony's mind. But in general, I think that would be a cool superpower to have. How about you? What superpower would you want to have? Uh, there's probably two. One, I think, would be being able to get flying, definitely, or teleportation. I hate being stuck in traffic or on a plane and you're like at somebody else's mercy so me to like snap your fingers and be where you want to be definitely That's one cool. of them and i think the, the other one would probably be i think being able to grant peace and happiness to oh. other people i don't know if you could do that on mass or it'd have to be on an individual basis but i think that would be something that would be amazing because i think we need a lot more love in the world so if we could do that i'd be those two would be my winning combination the world needs you to have that superpower yeah right man i'm not sure i'm gonna get it but you never know yeah. we're in some crazy times today right that's now. it and then another fun question cheat meal do you have a cheat day or do you are you pretty much to be honest with you i have cheat days i, I try to keep it to a cheat meal yeah. even if i have multiple days of cheat meals i try to make it a meal not an yeah. entire day so I try to pick my poison. If I'm going to have a burger, I'm going to enjoy that burger and I'm going to eat that burger. And I'm a burger fiend. So that's probably, if I had to choose one cheat meal that's my favorite, it's a nice, amazing, juicy, flavorful, like a smash burger. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I love burgers. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm a I'm a big burger fiend and smash burgers. I also love birria tacos. I'm a huge taco fan. And then pizza, burgers, tacos, and pizza. All those three in any order. Uh, those are my three weaknesses. I think that's why we get on, because I'm actually, it's my son's 13th birthday tomorrow. And that's what we're going for is a smash burger, his favorite place. There you go. Thanks for the invite. So, right. I'll be there. Uh, <laughs> I'll be there at noon. <laughs> Waiting on my burger. And then obviously training wise, I guess you're very lucky. You've probably trained with some amazing people over the years. And maybe we can use this. Is there somebody that you would past or present that you would love to train with? And if so, who would it be and where? Oh, I would to totally have trained with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger back in the 70s when he was doing the Mr. Was it Olympia back then? Yeah. yeah the Olympia and he was at the height of his game, how he was getting in people's heads and he was psyching people out and he was smoking weed. And he was just like, he didn't give a damn about anybody. Like he broke the rules unapologetically. Yeah. And, and that's what it was an era, man. During That was a time when Muhammad Ali would infiltrate his opponent's training camps and start yelling outside the window and throwing hot, like yeah. water balloons and teasing them. And he was a, a menace. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So those are two like icons that I felt from an athletic perspective and just from a just from a human perspective were yeah. larger than life. They were fearless, they didn't play by the rules, and they created their own rules at the time. Absolutely. Those two guys would have been guys I would have wanted to train with. Maybe well he's still maybe having make it happen with Arnold. You never know if he's tunes in or he listens to this at a later date. Well, he trains down here at uh Gold's Gym Venice a lot. Okay. So, yeah, he he. Every now and then he'll stop by and and, and show his face. So I might I might have to stalk him and yeah, yeah. <laughs> see if I can find him down. There. The other thing that I found interesting, you know, we were talking about you know the DNA. Yep. Was we're actually it's about you versus you a lot of the time as well. And I think a lot of people, particularly if they're starting fitness for the first time, they start looking at the other people in the gym and they start following what they're doing and trying to compare or compete with them. And particularly, I think the young men I go back to when I was a young man, it was all like, how big a weight can I throw around and so on. Whereas I think now it's about understanding your abilities, your 
strengths, what's going to work for you, and then working to optimize yourself rather than necessarily copying what somebody else is doing. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely, it took me time to get to that place where I no, no longer live with my ego, where I look around and I see guys and size them up and try to lift more than them. At one time, I did do that. But now I'm at a place where it is about me. I'm not in there checking what anybody else is lifting. I think age has a lot to do with that, too. The older you get, the less you want to compete with the young guys. It's like, all right, it's your yeah. time to yeah. hit personal PRs. I'm not hitting the PR. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to know how much I can lift. I just want to like look a certain way, feel a certain way, and do this continuously. But yeah, that those days are, are happily behind. Yeah, so look, I just want to pick you know, a couple of people asking, is this being paid for and so on? I just like to say up front, Laz has actually joined Biosynergy as a, an investor in the business. So it's not a, a paid promotion. This is true love between hopefully brand and individual. And it's not you putting your face to something for fun. This is something that this is why we had this call I referred to earlier where we had that kind of chemistry meeting and you actually did the kit that we're talking about today before. And you know, the idea was that if you loved it, we would have this conversation. Right. Maybe you want to tell people what, what happened and how we ended up working together. Yeah, so for me, it was trying the product first and then waiting for the results, which come back in a couple of weeks. And when I did get the results, the main thing that stood out to me was it was telling me stuff about my habits, my personal habits. That's what really got me the most. When it told me that I'm a snacker, when it told me about, and when I say that I'm a snacker, like your genetic disposition says that more than likely you probably will do these things. And that's where I started seeing, man, this thing is so accurate. It wasn't as much about what it, it stated that that I needed nutrition wise, which I appreciated because that's why I did it. It was the other stuff that came out that talked about susceptibility to back pain. Yeah. Different things that, that I didn't expect the app to be able to, um, the test to be able to hone in on. And listen, there are a lot of unanswered questions DNA wise that this was able to give me. Like when mm. you go to the doctor and they ask you about family history, I was raised by single mom so there are things in my father's side of history that i just cannot answer they say, do you have this or do you uh, have this in your family history i don't know because i don't know my father's side of my family as well as i do my mm. mother's side so there are things that i now because of this test can say that i have this information that i didn't have before so that part has been been really re it's been re 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 it's given me a revelation that i didn't have prior yeah. to now yeah i mean what's interesting is that obviously we've done some work with nasa as well we're going to be doing stuff with the artemis mission and a lot of athletes and so on have, have used the product and we've been doing nutrition for over 27 years so we're experts at this and what was really exciting for us when we launched this product was giving people the ability to understand what was going to work for them because from 27 years of working in nutrition and sports, what I've seen is that people often go down a path which is not the right path, and then they don't get the results that they want. And because of that, they fall out of love with fitness. And as we were saying earlier, fitness is so important, not just for your physical well-being, but also for your mental well-being as well. Uh, and particularly if you're starting it for the first time, or maybe you've done it for a while, it's really easy to make mistakes and then those mistakes will lead to a negative experience and therefore you can't maintain that kind of lifestyle and obviously what we want to do with this is, is give people that ability and then as you get older you know I'm over 50 now it's about adding life to my years so I want to be around to see my children's children please God and things like that so you know it's so important and particularly in America where you pay a lot for healthcare. Um, we actually had a conversation with one of the top doctors at Stanford, and he was saying that if you're going to see a doctor not knowing your DNA, 50% of the information they need to make a diagnosis, they don't have, and that your health is in your hands to an extent. You spend a lot of time 
and money getting lots of tests done to find out things that for a relatively low amount of money they could have found out very quickly and easily. Um, Another thing that I realize that when you go to a doctor, it really is, it's not like they're going to have the answer. They're asking a bunch of questions, trying to narrow down what it could be. What could this symptom be derived from? And if you don't have the answers to the questions that they're asking, it just widens what it is that they possibly think it might be. So the DNA results actually did help me because I do blood tests about, okay. yeah, two or three times a year just to make sure everything is cool and everything's great. And I do a physical every year. This year, I'm going to get a colonoscopy done. I know it's is that time? Is that, I've been running from it forever. So all of these things that we do are obviously to try to be preventative. So for me, that th this was a tool that I never knew I needed to, to be able to aid me in that quest, to be preventative and actively participating in my nutrition. Yeah. A couple of people just asking on the, the messages here. Uh, so <laughs> we don't ever give your DNA to anybody else. That was one of the big things for you yeah, as I well. So yeah, that, that's big because I know that people are worried about that. What do you guys do with the DNA results? Do they end up in nefarious hands? <laughs> is the biggest worry that people are worried about. Yeah, and we categorically don't do that. So actually you control that information and you can delete it anytime and uh, it's completely anonymized anyway. So that's really important. And also the science behind it, people like NASA who we work with and anybody can go on to Google, you can find that out. They don't work with companies unless they can trust the information they're getting. And also they know data security for them, a bit like in the armed forces or with athletes or really anybody, is absolutely vital because that is sensitive information. And what we only do is look at stuff and provide you information on things that you can change in your lifestyle. So again, a lot of other DNA brands out there, they've been, they look at things like your ancestry, which is fun but it doesn't give you information that you can use today to improve your health and well-being. Or they look at things like high risk of cancer, which is only a risk and quite frankly, is just really scary. So we only look at information that through diet, lifestyle, exercise and supplementation that you can improve. And I think what you yourself, I don't know how I mean, <laughs> cool, you showed me that cupboard, which was full of, I think about a hundred tubs of yeah, very, it was, it was crazy. It was like going into a supplement shop. And the thing is a lot of people, they buy into the marketing and they buy these products thinking it's going to help them. And in many cases, some of those things will, but equally you could be wasting money on things you don't need and not getting the things you do. One of the doctors we work with, he actually did the test and he didn't realize he was vitamin D deficient Me? and he couldn't. Me too. I was vitamin D deficient. Well. Okay. And he couldn't understand. He thought he had a great diet. He thought he was doing everything right. This is a qualified medical practitioner. And he literally, by taking the vitamin D, he said it revolutionized his health and well-being. He had energy. He didn't have tiredness. He wasn't feeling fatigued. And it's little things that can have such huge impact on your health. It's actually unbelievable. Yeah. Now, I... Um... I thought that I had enough vitamin D because I live in California where we have 300 plus days of sunlight per year. I make it a point, like another thing that I read about was sunning, yeah. getting up first thing in the morning and going and getting sun. You know, I try, try to do a, about 15 to 20 minutes of sun per day in the morning when I first get up just to feed my circadian rhythm and set my whole body clock properly. And so I was shocked to see that I was vitamin D uh, yeah. deficient because I thought I got enough, but I have been taking the vitamin D and I do feel a lot better. Yeah. What's cra crazy as well is when we've worked with athletes, so there's a guy that's an Olympic athlete, I won't name him, but he's always, he did the test and he was also, he was very skeptical. People are obviously skeptical of new things, science and so on and so forth. And he was a skeptic, which was fine. And he rang me up and he goes, I'm so excited. I've got the warrior gene. So that was like, he was just excited to be a warrior. <laughs> the next thing he goes was, 
throughout my whole career, I've been plagued by Achilles tendinopathy. And it came up in my DNA. And that, for him, was the kind of light bulb, this is the real deal. Because how would it, this is something that has been a problem for me. And I've now found it out, is confirmed in my DNA. And he said, look, if I'd known this 20 years ago, I could have avoided this. And rather than being a sub 10 100 meters runner, I might have even beaten Bolt. I don't know if it's true, but <laughs> he would Tell have been... me a little bit about the uh, epigenetics too, man. I'm curious yeah. to know more about that. That I'm not as familiar with. Okay, so epigenetics, so all of us obviously have a chronological age. So that's based on when we're born. So I'm 50 chronologically. Biologically, so through lifestyle and diet, your age can be above or below that. So interestingly, with NASA, they did a lot of the initial research into epigenetics. And they did it, and there's actually a paper they published in 2016 with twins that had been up, one had been in space, and one hadn't. And to summarize, the guy that had been in space aged more than his brother. So they were very interested to find out why, and obviously it's radiation, it's zero gravity, all these kind of things have an effect on you. So epigenetics, so sometimes, like my colleague who's normally in the office, she's extremely fit. She's done multiple Ironman. She's done lots of crazy endurance events. Physically, she's a nine out of 10 in terms of everything. But she found out that she was six years older biologically than she was chronologically because she wasn't getting enough rest and recovery. So what mm. she's is sometimes training is good, too much training is not good. And also as you train, a lot of people forget to refuel the body, whether that be through food or supplementation. And as a result of that, although they're looking great, under the hood, they're not so good. So once you've got your we look at your biological age we look at your memory age we look at your inflammation score and basically as you said earlier the dna provides you with this blueprint for you so it's a roadmap so if you buy any device normally whether it's a phone or a computer you're going to get an instruction manual with that you don't get one with your body and if you try to follow the instructions for a samsung phone with an iphone it wouldn't work and that's the same so There's only 1% difference between you and I and everybody else on this call or on the whole planet. And that 1% is what makes us. So by understanding what that 1% is, you can achieve as close to 100% as possible. So going back to long answer to a short question, what epigenetics does, that gives you an, a real life ability to measure how you're aging. So a lot of There's like a lot of stuff on the internet about billionaires, millionaires, all trying to add life to their years, all about longevity. Yeah, everything they want to live right now is anti-aging this, anti-aging yeah. that, from face creams to vitamins to everything. Yeah, so what they're all looking to do is you can't turn back the physical clock on time, as in I can't be 40 again, but what I can be through diet, lifestyle, and exercise, I can have the biological age of a 40-year-old. And this is what we're giving people the ability to achieve and the ability to measure it. So, you know, we'll give you, you buy that, we're giving you the instruction manual and we're saying, test it. And if, for example, particularly with elite athletes, astronauts and so on, small, very small changes have massive outcomes. When you're talking about us, it takes, I say us, like regular people who aren't full-time athletes or astronauts or whatever, Um, it takes a bit longer. So we recommend people only do the epigenetics two to three times a year. I took, um, mine, I took mine last month, man. I'm waiting on the results. Yeah. I'm a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. Because <laughs> I think I'm in good shape and I think I'm probably going to be younger than my biological age, but who knows? Yeah, you know, like, so when I, I started, I was two years older. Right. Then I started, I realized I was taking some supplements that were wrong. And I've been in the supplement business for over 20 right. years. So I thought I knew what I was doing. And I've always exercised from my 20s, so nearly 30 years of exercising. I then started implementing some of the changes. I cut out coffee, mm. I cut out lactose. Mm. I also started with vitamin D, ZMA, glutamine. Omegas was, was a big thing for me because I don't have any fish in my diet. Mm. And I'm now, biologically, I'm 
43. Wow. So seven years, I'm now nine years younger than I was when I first, when you first took, took it. Took it. Wow. Epigenetically you are. Yeah. And what's right. interesting, that's translated into my gym. So my, my PB now on a bench press is 120 kilos. What's that? 250 pounds or something? I don't know. I don't know. I can't do the conversion, but yeah. the point was up until then, I've always struggled to get over a hundred kilo bench mm -hmm. press. So whether or not it's psychological, I don't think it is, but this has definitely changed my life. And also it's simple things like sleep. I understood that I actually need more sleep for my DNA. So I actually, if now, if I go on like TV <laughs> with the products, I say, I can't do early mornings because I'm not a morning person. I also found out that I've got a short attention span. So when I look back at all my school reports, it always said, Daniel is not paying attention in class. And I was a very problem, young adolescent teenager. I was always getting into trouble, fights, all this kind of stuff. And that now, even today, I've still got a short attention span, but I understand it now. But it right. explained a lot about what I was like as a kid. So I got my children to do it. And interestingly, my son's the same. So what we do with him is we give him, if he's doing homework, rather than him sitting down and spending hours doing it, we encourage him to stop, go and burn some energy and then come back right. to it. And that again is, we're seeing that effect in right. his grades already. Giving him that moment to break it off, yeah. burn some of his energy off when he starts getting restless and then come back and focus again. Yeah. that's. It. And a lot of things are, it could be that you're not a morning person. So let's say you're, you're working mornings. Some people work night shifts, some people work morning shifts. It could be that if you've got an option and you find out you're a morning person, try and be on the morning shift, or you know that you're going to be more productive at that time. Right. So there's, there's so many, like I said, we're so unique. Yeah. Just trying to copy what, what other people are doing just never works. The, the beauty of this product and why I'm so excited excited to have you and so many other amazing people endorsing it and part of the story. <laughs> Our main man, yeah, you know, you're, we've got NASA, but, and again, that's a, we don't pay them to endorse the product, but we've also got the guy called, I think we, I should get on the next one, the Iron Cowboy, who maybe some of your, the people listening today know. So this guy did a hundred Ironmen in a hundred days back to back. That's nice. So arguably the guy's insane. <laughs> yeah, that's, but, that's ridiculous. That's he's crazy. now look, got an even bigger challenge planned and he's stumbled across the, the product and he's looking to try and even at his level, try and make improvements. Got you. And again, if you look at uh, you know, space, if you can help an astronaut, imagine what you can do for somebody living right. on earth. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. I'm really privileged to have you on board with this and I'm delighted that you saw the, the benefit yeah. of the product and yeah, I'm excited to share my journey while I'm taking the, the supplements and how the DNA connecting to now my new approach to supplementation and diet, how that affects what my efforts are to be as healthy as possible and share it with everybody else. What you said you were going to share something today with folks. Yes. So what I'm going to do is we set up a code LAS20. So anybody who's watching, maybe you can share it later, can get 20% discount. Also, anybody that DMs us after this, so on the bias, if you follow us on Biosynergy DNA on Instagram on our page, we're going to pick one person and we're going to send them out the jewel kit, so the DNA and the epigenetics, worth $499 and absolutely free. Wow. So actually what I'll do is anybody that follows and DMs us on the page, I'll let you choose the winner. And maybe if you're feeling up for it, like you did for my friend at NASA, you could give them a personal message. All right, I'll do it. Welcome to the team. Last 20 is the yeah. code. That'll give them 20% off. Yeah. And then if they follow Biosynergy DNA, at Biosynergy DNA, and DM yeah. the page, somebody's going to win the DNA and epigenetics yeah. test. And uh, all right, that sounds like a pretty, pretty good gift to start the year off yeah. January is when people want to get healthy again and get ready for summer. This is when you build the summer body. So perfect. That sounds great. Yeah. Man. And also the thing is about this, and I think you appreciate it. You only have to have it do it once. 
So it's a one and done. It's, an, it's a one-off investment in you and it's free for life. So the other thing is within the app, we haven't talked about it much, we've got over 600 recipes. So if you're struggling with food, and hopefully at some point you might do some cooking for us <laughs> with some of the recipes, we give you recipes aligned to your DNA that you can follow. So you can actually save money on what you're buying from a food point of view. It can help you plan your meals. We also give you lifestyle tracking. So if you've got any smart device, you can actually get your steps, your heart rate, and everything else within the app. We also give you an air quality tracker. So again, you travel around a lot, you probably go to some places. Uh, if you want to go for a run and you know the air quality is poor, which I guess happens in LA sometimes, you might want to go for a run. Uh, and then we've also got, if you don't want to go to the gym, and it's not for everybody, there's over 600 workouts in the app as well. And once you get your results and you put in your goal, you'll just get the workouts and the videos that are aligned to your DNA. Hopefully, it's a one-stop solution to everybody's health and well-being. Yeah, the workout, the, the app is extremely expensive. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, extremely extensive yeah. with information. It gives you a lot of information. I think we should probably at some point do another live where we go through the app. Yeah, that'd be cool. Some of the results that you get in the app. We're already at the 45 minute mark. So I think we should probably hop off. Yeah, but I think we should probably do another one and, and, and get a little deeper into the app because that's what when I got that mm. I was sold. Yeah, I was sold when I saw how much information you guys were able to extrapolate from that one one test. Very yeah. easy. Well, the thing is, we test 800,000 snips of DNA just to generate the reports for you. So it's about as robust as you can get but i really appreciate your time thank you everybody who was kind enough to join us look forward to the next one i hope you make it to the gym laz and i want to see a nice bicep pump next time we speak oh <laughs> guns out that's uh, not a pump no that's i'm gonna get involved that's... now <laughs> all right my brother thank you for joining us today and oh. at biosynergy dna yeah. And follow, send a DM, and, and we'll, we'll pick a winner. Thanks a lot. Take care. Hi, my brother. Talk to you. Peace. Right.